By devoting just six minutes each weekday for one year, you can read through the entire New Testament using David Servant's daily devotional, Heaven Word Daily. Order your copy at heavenword.tv. Well, it's so good to be together once again as we are continuing our chronological study through the entire New Testament. Our study today takes us back to Matthew chapter 8. And so if you've got your Bible, why don't you open up to Matthew chapter 8. We're going to start in just a minute in verse number 14. But this is a really encouraging chapter, at least the first part of this chapter, for anybody who is in need of healing. And my surveys have shown that that's a lot of people. And uh, a lot of people are discouraged when it comes to, to healing. They've been plagued for a long time uh, with chronic problems in their bodies and so forth, uh, seeking medical help and not finding the answers they're looking for. And they get to that place where unless God heals them, you know, they're not going to be healed. And so it's to those kinds of people that uh, I want to talk to today, uh, particularly as we look at these scriptures that are so encouraging when it comes to uh, looking to the Lord for healing. Now, uh, sure, uh, some of these things, in some people's minds anyways, are controversial. I don't know how anybody could get upset with someone who is encouraging Christian people whose God is the Lord to look to the Lord as their healer. Uh, but yet, uh, some people unfortunately uh, find that offensive for some reason. Um, but let's, let's not be among those people, okay? One-tenth of everything that's recorded about Jesus Christ in the four Gospels concerns his healing ministry. And so clearly, God wants us to know Jesus as the healer. And prior to the ministry of Christ, of course, there's lots of examples of God divinely healing people in the Old Testament. In fact, God made specific promises to the people of Israel in their covenant with them, if you'll keep my statutes and obey my commandments, I'll take sickness out of the midst of you and I'll fulfill the number of your days. And David wrote in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and let me not forget any of your benefits who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases. Okay, And there's many specific examples of people whom God healed. And so the Lord has revealed himself over and over again from the beginning to the end of the Bible as the healer. And if we're God's people, you know, well, we ought to be experiencing uh, some healing, right? Sh sure. Now, uh, I know that there are roadblocks to, to healing. I know that uh, you can't just sum up everything the Bible says about healing and sickness in, in, you know, in five minutes. Uh, certainly, we know that Scripture teaches that it's possible to open the door uh, to sickness through something that we've done. Uh, it can be sin. Uh, you know, Jesus said to one person whom he healed, uh, go and sin no more that nothing worse may befall you. Well, that makes it very clear, right, that if that man had not stopped sinning, uh, something worse, another sickness even worse than what he had could have befallen him. And so if we find ourselves ill, um, it's a good thing to do a spiritual examination. Of course, it's good to do that at any time, right? Uh, but we know that uh, the New Testament tells us that um, in Corinth there were people who were sick because of uh, their disobedience and they failed to judge themselves. And so Paul said, you are disciplined or judged by the Lord. And so th this is something that we can talk about uh, as we work our way through the New Testament. But the first thing I wanted to point out in Matthew chapter 8 is that, you know, Jesus is the healer. And if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, come on, then we ought to be looking to him as our healer. He revealed himself, one of his old covenant names was Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. And we find an example at the beginning of chapter 8, we already covered this, uh, where Jesus runs into a, a leper who says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me 
clean. She says, I'm willing, be cleansed, touched him, he's healed. Within a short time later, he's entering into Capernaum, a centurion. Here comes a, a Roman soldier, says, my servant is lying very ill at home. C come and heal him. Jesus says, I'll come and heal him. And uh, the guy says, oh, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word. She says, be it done to you according to your faith. And you know, the servant was healed, okay? And so now we come to the next instance here in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 14. Peter must have recorded this by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, to encourage us to first of all see that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the miracle-working healing Messiah, but also that Jesus was the healer and that we could look to him for healing as well. So let's read it, Matthew 8 and verse 14. When Jesus came into Peter's home, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick in bed with a fever. Now, the same story is recorded in Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. If you read it there, Luke, the physician, recorded that Peter's mother-in-law had a high fever. And so perhaps uh, this is more life-threatening than even Matthew, uh, you know, intimated in, in his, his, his record. Then verse number 15, Jesus, he touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and waited on them. So there, just one more healing, Peter's mother-in-law suffering from a high fever, instantaneously healed by the Lord Jesus. Nothing in this case is said about her faith. Luke does tell us that the, some people entreated Jesus you know, on her behalf, and so they obviously had some faith themselves, or they wouldn't have asked Jesus with expectation uh, to, to heal Peter's mother-in-law. And then we come to verse number 16. When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and get this, and healed all who were ill. So Jesus did not show partiality or favoritism to anybody who came to the, the apparently to the door, the, the door of Peter's home there in Capernaum. All who came, he healed them all. I always like to remind folks that if you would have been there that evening and if you would have been sick, you would have been healed. It would have been God's will for you to have been healed then. Well, has God's will changed? Faith building and inspiring. All right, think about these things and I'll see you next time.